what is up guys this is Studio back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM this is the 12th April 2024 build this is based on the dynamic partition kind of thing so if you don't know how to flash the dynamic partition based ROMs you can check out the flashing guide from the description in the about section this is how it looks like the Evolution X version is 8.5 and of course based on Android 14 here we have the security patch that is latest of April 5th 2024 so that's nice to see and here we have the 12th April 2024 build. Of course the build maintainer is still Joho up and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 kernel. In the system settings we get the gestures and all, we have the quickly open camera and stuff then we have the one handed mode working perfectly fine, we have the navigation mode right here. In the settings of it we have the advanced gestures if you need that, you can enable the extended swipe actions and you can customize it however you want to. We have the pill length and radius both changing option and this is the maximum gesture bar length and the radius you can do. We have the back gesture height and we have the back gesture animation. Then we also have the IME button space you can hide it totally if you want to and we have the swipe to invoke assistant as well. Well this works fine as you can see the Gemini is there and it is working and tapping and holding as you can see the Gemini is working but the circle to search for some reason it's not appearing it will work later on not really sure we have the left edge right edge customization for the back gesture we also have the two button and three button navigations as well we have the double tap to check phone there we have the show ambient and also in the lift to check phone as well we have the show ambient I have the lift to check phone show ambient enabled I'll show you the pickup gesture if it's working we have the press and hold power button action you can change it to power menu or digital assistant and we have the double tap option the normal double tap to check phone and we have the swipe to screenshot as well and that is actually working perfectly fine we also have the share edit delete the google lens and even the capture mode feature appears over here then we have the quick torch or the long press power button to toggle torch that is working perfectly fine and we have the prevent ringing option as well we also get a system updated so you check for updates from here now in terms of the customizations and all it has huge customizations i have showed every customization i think in the poco f5's video you can see all the customizations it has by the way in the lock screen we also get the newer kind of clocks like the ios style clock and stuff like that so yeah all those things are there now here for the k20 pro specifically we also have the udaps customization so you do get the fingerprint scanner animations if you really need those so yeah you do get the old school styles of the fingerprint scanner animation like the cyberpunk and stuff so yeah you can enable all of these these will work and there is the always on fingerprint option and in the normal settings like the miscellaneous settings we also have the spoofing option so you can see all the spoofs this rom includes the rom side play integrity then we have the play integrity fix and we have the pixel props then we have the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher pc in games then the netflix snapchat etc spoofs and even the storage encryption option is there and we have the screen of animation as well on the bottom we have the file transfer for the usb configuration so that's nice we also have the pocket detection and stuff like that and here in the quick settings we do have the brightness slider position changing option and stuff so if i do it to the bottom as you can see the brightness slider will appear on the bottom all the time so that's nice in the notifications we also get the island kind of notification and otherwise all the customizations are present no need to worry now talking about the home screen this is how it looks like it looks beautiful in my opinion and i have been using the ai kind of wallpaper by the way in the wallpapers and styles you will get the like more options there we have the ai wallpapers emoji workshop then the minerals living universe all the live wallpapers and stuff are still there so you can use all of that and while i'm in the wallpapers and styles let me show you there is a themed icon so you can enable that i guess and if I just go home, as you can see, themed icons are working perfectly fine. And also the app grid, you can set it up to 5x5. Five five. In the lock screen, we have the lock screen clock styles of Android 14. And you can choose whichever clock styles you like more. And yeah, pretty much you get the idea. There are plethora of clocks for the lock screen. We have the shortcut changing option of the left and right shortcut of the lock screen. And even the flashlight and stuff is working fine with the shortcuts of the lock screen. And we also have the show notification on the lock screen option. And in the more settings, we have the device control and stuff. All the lock screen kind of customizations are there. By the way, we do get the pixel launcher right here. So you don't get a huge amount of customization, I would say. In the suggestions, you can, of course, disable the suggestions. No need to worry. So yes, as you can see, the battery widget is working perfectly fine. So even the Android 14 style clock widget and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. And all the animations, as you can see, it's very smooth experience, no problems. But everything is running on 60 hertz, guys. There is no 90 hertz or something like that. No overclocking for now. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer. Swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. This is how the quick setting panel actually looks like. You can edit and add multiple toggles over here. 
But for now, for K20 Pro, there is only this internet toggle. There is no separate Wi-Fi and the mobile data kind of toggle over here. But on Poco A5, it has been added with the 12th April update. And here we have the Bluetooth settings and all. It will appear like this. Bluetooth devices and stuff are working perfectly fine. No need to worry. The flashlight, the dark theme, battery saver. These are the toggles that I have added. And in the screen recording option, we have the single app option or the entire screen. And we also have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. And all the other features that you are noticing from the screen, we have the always on display toggle right here the hotspot the nightlight the google home controls fps info is also there if you enable that this is how it will appear like this so that's nice let me just disable that we have the qr code scanner extra dim and the normal do not disturb alarm airplane mode descending option etc are there now let's talk about the stock camera well you do get the Liga camera right out of the box over here and this camera it's really great it's working fine mostly but right out of the box it may not work properly let me tell you that if you click picture with the rear camera normally it will actually force close the camera and it will not process beyond this 1080 by 1440 resolution so make sure you go into the settings to actually fix it let me actually give you an example this picture i took after fixing the settings and here as you can see this is a proper 12 megapixel photo with the rear camera that i took and the details of this one it's really good so let me show you how to fix it in the settings of it the camera settings pretty much and here if you just scroll down to the bottom and go to the lab settings just disable the enable parallel processing for portrait mode i think this is the option that i have disabled and the front camera is working fine but with the rear camera the parallel processing it's really not working so that's why i have disabled the parallel processing and after that the camera is processing the pictures perfectly fine now all the lenses and stuff are working perfectly fine as you can see the switching between lenses and in the video settings there is up to 4k and the 60 fps option over here no need to worry about 4k 60 fps with the rear camera that is working fine even with the wide angle lens there is 4k 30 fps and the 2x option of course supports the 4k 60 fps and we have the documents mode right here then we have the pro mode you can shoot pro mode videos again up to 4k and 60 fps with the rear camera and with the front camera yeah there is no 60 fps option there is only up to 10 p 30 fps option with the front camera video here with the portrait mode as you can see with the rear camera it is working fine let me actually quickly take a portrait picture yes the camera is not force closing right now photo as you can see it worked perfectly fine no problems whatsoever so i just took a portrait mode selfie this is how it came out to be and yeah it has good amount of details i would say picture quality over here overall it's awesome no need to worry about it by the way again the night mode the 14 pixel mode everything is there with this like a camera and there are more options like the vlog short film slow motion the sticker avatars and stuff like that in terms of the basic stuff yes it passes the integrity test banking apps will be working perfectly fine here and the DRM info over here shows as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. And this ROM does offer this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos with the Google Photos app so that's nice. And also in Google Play Store it shows device is certified. By the way this ROM does come with the Google's phone app and the messaging app and stuff like that. All are working perfectly fine. And of course if you insert a Volte SIM card it will be working perfectly fine with that. In the app settings let me actually show you there is the cloned apps option so the dual apps kind of feature will be working perfectly perfectly fine as you can see you can just create another app from right here for dual apps kind of functionality we also have the game space so you can add any kind of game over here to have the gaming overlay and even the fps while gaming in the notifications we also have the flash notification option so that is actually working perfectly fine now let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like we also have the charging control right here enabling charging control will disable fast charging i would say and we have the battery charge warning then inside battery optimization we have power app battery optimization controls and we also have the battery information right here you will get to see the battery temperature the voltage the design and current capacity and even the cycle count the charging cycle count shows up right here it has 105 charging cycles because i have replaced the battery over here now talking about the battery life i would say it's great as you can see from here the screen on time actually shows about seven hours these all are estimated numbers guys but still i would say the battery life that you will get it's pretty decent and the screen off shows as about 13 days that's because my device was in standby for a day almost and we have the combine use for about a week that's a huge amount of number but i would say for normal combine use it will work for two to three days no problems in the health section it doesn't show up anything for me because i haven't charged it properly from 40 to 100 but yeah otherwise the overall fast charging and all everything is working fine no need to worry about it in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like if you just scroll down a little bit more we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option we have much more volume controls per app volume control is there we also have the haptic feedback so you can change the intensity of the vibration we have the clear speaker option right here but there is no me audio react or dolby atmos over here for now
Let's talk about the display settings. We have the brightness level. The adaptive or auto brightness may or may not work because if I turn it on, it's not changing anything. So that's how it is. We have the extra dim. We have the lock screen settings right here and we have the privacy controls and stuff. Let me go back. We have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and we also have the screen attention right here. The dark theme and if you just enable the dark theme, you will get that pitch black kind of option over here. No need to worry about it. Let me just disable the dark theme for the time being. Let's go back. We have the display size and text changing option. We have the bold text, high contrast, etc. We have the DPI changing option. The night light is there. You can enable it if you want to. We have the live display option and you can do the color calibration if you want to from right here. I think yes, it is working. We have the colors. You can set it to boosted or saturated or adaptive. I just selected boosted because I like that way. And we have the deceiving and we have the smart pixels and stuff. By the way, sliding a finger across the status bar does increase or decrease the brightness as you can see. Then we have the allow window will blurs and the prevent accidental wake up and the wake up on plug. There is no refresh rate changing option for now again. But overall with normal task, it will be working fine in 60 hertz of course because the display is running at 60 hertz overall. And here, opening Twitter or X. And right now, if I start scrolling, as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. No problems whatsoever with scrolling. And in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. And here, if I just tap on the app icon, we have the split screen option and stuff. We have the screenshot, the select option. And if you go all the way to the left, we have the clear all option right here. No problems with it. So switching between apps, it's not a problem at all. It switches pretty fast. No issues. Scrolling in YouTube works perfectly fine. No problems. So overall, in terms of day to day performance, it will be great. And here are the benchmarks. If you are wondering about the overall performance benchmarks of this particular custom ROM. Time to show you guys the security settings in here in the more settings. We do not have any kind of app lock over here, but it does have the hide developer status option. So if particular apps are not working with the developer options turned on, you can just select that app from here. Let me go back in the normal device security settings. We have the scramble pin layout, auto confirmation unlock, and we have the NL pin privacy and stuff like that. We have the fingerprint and face unlock both. I have added the fingerprint for now. Let me actually show you how is the fingerprint scanner working. But first, I have the always on display turned off. So I'll show you the pickup gesture. If I just put the device like this and pick it up on my hand, as you can see, the always on display is working perfectly fine. And if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. Let me show you with the always on display turned on right now. So I'll just double tap to sleep. And as you can see, always on display looks really great. And even the like fingerprint scanner over here looks really nice right out of the box. And here, just tap the fingerprint scanner. It's working fine. Let me actually show you one more time with the fingerprint scanner. As you can see, it unlocks perfectly fine. So yes, overall the fingerprint scanner speed, it's not a problem at all. Tap and hold the power button. As you can see, it turns on the flashlight and turns it back off. Time to set up the face unlock for now. The face unlock has this always require confirmation and the skip lock screen option. And here we also have the watch unlock. If you have a smartwatch, I think you can connect it to this. And here right now, if I just try to unlock with the face unlock, yes, right after I double tap, as you can see, it just straight up pops out the front camera, the motorized front camera, and it tries to unlock it right when I double tap to wake. So that's how it is. There is no swipe up to unlock. Okay, so the brightness dims down a little bit more when I'm using the face unlock for some reason. So Evolution X right now is available. The latest 12th April build is available for the K20 Pro and even the Poco A5 and even for other devices as well. Let me know down there how do you feel about the latest Evolution X ROM on the K20 Pro. And I think this is definitely one of the best options based on Android 14 in April 2024, at least for now. If you liked it, please share this video with your friends and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be watching you guys in the next one. Bye now.